trying to get more data back to Facebook after the iOS 14 disaster problem issue. There's still a way to get it over there if you're using something like lead pages, click funnels, and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it using the conversion API so that we use server side access to get the lead data and purchase data back from click funnels, lead pages, all these things back to Facebook so that you don't lose so much data. That's a good thing, right? Who wants to lose data? I like data. And stick around to the end because I am going to show you a Facebook ad hack to advertise to group members. What? Matt, you can't advertise to groups. You can't advertise to groups. Yes, you can. I'm gonna show you. Hey, thank you for being here. Subscribe to the channel. Like this video so more people see it. I am trying so hard to protect people from the iOS 14 privacy lockdown changes that are happening. So here's the deal. The conversion API is not the silver bullet to fixing all of your problems with Facebook ads in the wake of iOS 14, but it's still super important to start getting more of that data back to Facebook. It's going to make your campaigns better. It's going to make the Facebook advertising platform better and more protected as Apple rolls down this avalanche of insanity and other bad Apple things. So we've gone over here how to do it in Shopify. We've gone over how to do it on WordPress. Here's a link in the upper corner to the WordPress one. And you'll see both links in the description. But everybody kept asking me, this is one of the most requested videos on my channel, is how do you set up the conversion API if you're on ClickFunnels or something? And the answer is Zapier. Super easy, gonna show you right now. Okay, so really what you're looking to do here is get Zapier hooked up through the Conversions API and then set up the Zap in Zapier. This is so that you can take something from, say, ClickFunnels, lead pages, whatever it might be that doesn't have direct Conversion API access, like a Shopify store would have easy, easy uh, Conversion API access, and then getting that over. Okay, so let me show you how to do this. And what's interesting is I've done a little bit of research on this and... Uh, the the information that Zapier gives you on in their blog, at least currently, is wrong. <laughs> right now, it says to connect to go to connect data sources when you're in your events manager. So again, you're get business manager, then you go to events manager, and that's where you're going to see all this stuff. This is all your pixel data here and your conversion API data. Uh, but uh, if you do that, it won't work. You have to stay in events manager here and then go to settings. And then when you're in settings, you want to scroll down, go to Conversions API, set up through a partner integration, and go to Choose a Partner, and that's when you go to Zapier. So then you want to go through, authorize your Zapier connection, and uh, go through those steps. You want to follow instructions on Zapier's website to finishing up, setting up your Conversion API, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so now let's go over to Zapier. So we're going to make a new Zap. And I've already gone ahead and set that up, so you'll see how that works. Um, so let's just say it's ClickFunnels, where you can get purchases, leads, whatever it may be. Um, remember that as long as you can get all the data over from the customer, um, which is you know name, email, phone number, address, anything that you can get over, you can send that all back. Whoops. You can send that all back to the Conversion API. Remember, the way that the Conversion API works is through automatic advanced matching, which means that uh, Facebook doesn't know exactly who this person is as soon as you put their name in. They use their algorithms to say, okay, based on all of the information you've given me about this person, I'm going to try to match it to somebody that's in Facebook. Okay. All right. So uh, let's say it's click funnels. We're going to trigger an event um, for this, for, for these purposes, we'll just do like, we're just going to get a lead. Uh, we're going to send a lead event over. If we're selling stuff on click funnels or some other site that we're trying to do this with, you go with new successful purchase. Um, and, but let's just go with getting a lead. So we do new contact activity because click funnels would get that contact activity. Click funnels account. Uh, we've got my click funnels account there. We'll go to continue. Uh, you'd go and select your funnel here. I'm just going to say all funnels because I can. Uh, test your trigger so that you can get a, a, a you can get somebody in there so that you can fill in the rest of it. I don't need to do that just for these purposes. And you'll see that I've got Facebook conversions right here. So that's my action event. My trigger is click funnels. My action event is Facebook conversions. For my action event, in this case, I'm going to send a lead event because that's it's the Facebook event that I want to send back 
to uh, Facebook and ads manager and the pixel, okay? Or the, or the events manager rather. So I'm gonna send a lead event. If you're going for purchases, you do a purchase event, of course. So let's send a lead event over. And I've gotta choose my account here and I've already set up my account and we went through that in the first part of this video. Go to continue. Okay, now action source. Uh, this is a little bit confusing, um, but we're gonna go ahead and say website here. Um, even though all of these things are necessary, um, we're gonna get a chance to put that in for the automatic advanced matching later. Okay, so for the business account, I've selected guide social, just my agency business account, and for the pixel, I've selected the new GS agency pixel. Okay, and so we have event info here, and really anything that you got, put it in. <laughs> um, likely you won't have a lot to put here, and that's okay. Um, if you wanna know more about this, you click this and it'll take you here where it shows you all of the customer information parameters that can be sent over. So depending on what Zapier actually pulls through for you, you could do these. But this customer information is the best um, because this is where the hashed information will come through. So uh, you go through and select the email address of that person, the phone number, and again, you select them from a ClickFunnels place. Um, so in here, you're going to see a bunch of stuff that relates to what they did in ClickFunnels. And uh, based on that, you will be able to fill in their email. If you get, if you're getting a phone number, put in the phone number again, select this and find it with the ClickFunnels source like phone. Okay. So once you get to this stage, you're going to want to take all the ClickFunnels properties by clicking the drop down and then finding the ClickFunnels property and then selecting it like I've done here with phone. Now the, the example that I have has no data in it, but you can see why collecting more data is gonna make it easier for the Convergence API to actually match that with somebody because there's just gonna be more information so that they can, so that Facebook can match that person within Facebook, within the Facebook ecosystem. So anything you have put there, right? And then you're pretty much good to go. You're pretty much good to go. So you just wanna test it, um, and then you're sort of in good, in good shape. Um, you just need to make sure that, see, I have these empty because I did them in the last step and then didn't go back and do them. But these are, these are the three right here. So once you have those there, you are in good shape. And then you can start sending information over through the conversions API. Now I told you that I would tell you how to advertise to groups. You can totally do it. It is an awesome hack. I love this hack. So here is how the hack works. I'm going to give you the basics of this. I mean, I don't even think this needs to be like an over the shoulder type thing because I, because really it's a simple concept that if you follow it correctly, uh, you're going to be able to crush it. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to have a Facebook business page and you're going to create your video that you want to select some sort of value based video, ideally. So you start with some sort of value based video. Okay. So you've got your video and that video is now going to become a conduit for all of the data you can now collect to retarget these people. So obviously the more active your Facebook group is, the better because they're more likely to interact with content. But obviously if you post a video directly in a group, who cares, it doesn't matter. You can't track that data. But if you create a video and you post it organically to your business Facebook page, organic post to Facebook page. Then you can share that video inside a group. Mm -hmm. You can share that video inside of a group and then it will be the same video file. And that same video will populate in Ads Manager when you go to create an ad. So you share that video inside a group, the more value-based, the better. And, and the bigger your group, the better. Obviously, the more engaged your group, the better, because they need to actually watch the video. But then you can actually go through and s select a custom audience. So go, so create a campaign, go to the ad set level, and create a custom audience of video views. And then 
you find your video, which will automatically post because you posted it organically in your Facebook page and your Facebook account. And then you pick a number like 10 seconds, 25 seconds, whatever. But like, let's just say for, for these purposes, lower would probably be better because you're going to get less because it's such a concentrated small audience. So let's say that we say, okay, I want you to like, I want you to advertise to everybody who watch at least 10 seconds uh, of this video. And there, you have your group audience. And you're gonna say, wait, but all these people are gonna watch it organically. Yeah, but if you wanna gate it, all you need to do is, you can do a few things. I mean, first of all, you could, within this within this ad set, you could exclude people that uh, like your page. But an even easier way to do it is, when you when you post this video inside of a group, you dark post it. Meaning this post exists, but when you actually set it up, you backdate it and you hide it from the timeline so that people can't actually watch this video. The only people that will see this post and watch this video will be people in the group. And since they're doing it inside the group and you can't see it anywhere else, you're only going to capture the group members. Now remember, Facebook needs a decent size audience these days to feed out. So you have to make sure that you're probably going for 10 second video views if you're going to just gate this to the group. And you have to make sure that you are uh, creating engaging value-based content. Not to mention you're keeping up with your group. But this is a nice little hack. I just wanted to share this theoretical framework with you because it can really work. It really can work quite well. Okay, so if you're on Shopify and you wanna know how to set up the conversions API, click over here. Uh, over here. <laughs> and if you are uh, wondering more about these iOS 14 crazy changes, you can click the video right here. Thank you so much for your time.